Today we are going to make bouillabaisse. It's a French fisherman's soup, and this recipe is special to me because of my father. What you're looking at is a folder that my father put together years ago, and uh, it contains about 21, no, 22 uh, recipes for bouillabaisse from different sources, and uh, highlighted the way my father likes to highlight little things. And um, I've been on a mission to perfect this recipe. Can't say that I have but uh, I'll share with you what I've learned. And uh, Daddy, I hope this uh, does you proud. I love you. So the first step to making your bouillabaisse is to make a good fish stock. If you don't want to bother with a fish stock, you can certainly use clam juice that you can buy in any supermarket, but I'm going to make a fish stock. And to do that, I'm going to uh, boil some fish heads that I have over here and tails. You could also use bones. I just didn't have any this time. I, I just bought some red snapper heads at, at the fish uh, market and then I cut off some of the heads of the fish that I bought. I have red snapper, I think this is a por porgy, porgy, and um, a striped bass. I'll put a list of uh, suitable fish in the ingredient list uh, down below. This is just some of the types of fish you can use. You, you want to use a white fish, uh, nothing oily, not salmon, not mackerel. Uh, I'll give you a list of uh, suitable fish. It, it's not exclusive, but just uh, something that you can work with. Now, if you notice, I, I cut out the eyes from the fish. My mom always said uh, to cut out the eyes to keep the fish uh, stock clear. I've never done it any other way, so I don't know if it's true or not, but that's just how I always do it. And uh, what I have here is onions, celery, carrots, some thyme, some bay leaves, some black peppercorns. I'm going to throw the fish uh, heads and tails in here. And once it comes to a boil, I'm going to skim off all the scum that comes up on the top. I'm going to add some salt, and I'm going to lower the flame and cook it for two whole hours. So you're going to need to uh, slice a very large onion into thin half circles. And uh, also I have four leeks here, and I just wanted to show you how to clean your leeks. Uh, you want to split them down the middle, well, trim off the green. Uh, split them down the middle and under running water or in a bowl full of water. You want to make sure to get, well, you slice it all the way, almost all the way. And you want to make sure to get in between each one of these layers because you will find sand and grit there. So make sure that your leeks are nice and clean. And I'm going to slice them into half circles as well. I've chopped my leeks and I've also chopped some tomatoes here. I have six uh, just regular tomatoes. Uh, you could do more or less to taste. And I have one bulb of fennel that I've also sliced into half circles. And uh, you can reserve this. You can you can use the, the fronds for uh, garnish later. I'm not going to because my father's not a big fan of that uh, anise licorice kind of flavor. Uh, but if you like that, you can certainly add some fresh uh, fronds at the end for garnish. You're going to start by heating a half a cup of olive oil, and that seems like a lot, but the olive oil is one of the important ingredients in this dish. You're going to want to rapidly boil your stock. Usually we simmer stock, but in this dish, rapidly boiling your stock with the olive oil uh, lets the oil emulsify the dish and the flavors run through it. So pick a good quality olive oil, heat it up, and then we're going to add our vegetables. So you want to sweat your onions, leeks, and uh, fennel bulb, and uh, when they soften up a little bit, you're going to add some garlic to your taste. I have about two tablespoons of uh, minced garlic here, and I'm just going to keep cooking this a little while longer. Once your vegetables are soft, you're going to add your tomatoes and cook them for a little while longer. Once your tomatoes have softened, you can add some tomato paste. I have about three tablespoons here, and I have about a tablespoon and a half of dried basil, and I have some dried orange rind. Almost from a whole orange, it wasn't a very large one. You can add this to your taste, and I'm going to stir that in and let it cook for a little while. For the orange rind, you want to make sure that you don't get any of the white pith. Just use a potato peeler and uh, just peel off the outside of the orange. So I just want to show you the stock. I cooked this yesterday and uh, I set it in the fridge overnight. I strained it completely so it's nice and clear. And uh, now I've cooked the tomato paste in here for a little bit, probably a minute. I'm going to add two pinches of saffron threads another key ingredient here. It gives it a lovely flavor and color. 
and you don't want to overdo it because it'll taste like medicine but two pinches with your fingers like that is good and now I'm just going to add the fish stock now some recipes call for using dry white wine and you could certainly do that if you're going to do that uh, you would add it before you add your stock and let it cook for a few minutes to evaporate some of the alcohol maybe reduce it by half and then add your stock and I'm just going to bring this to a rapid boil and cook it for about 45 minutes and then we're going to strain it completely so while our soup is cooking we're going to make the rui and I'm going to take about half a teaspoon of saffron threads and I took a little bit of the soup that's cooking right now and it's really really hot I'm going to pour it over and let this steep for a little bit to soften up the saffron okay so I've taken a, a firmly packed cup of white bread that I ripped up and I poured that saffron mixture over it there was probably about a quarter cup of liquid in here I'm just gonna let this set for a little bit so once your bread absorbs all of the liquid you're going to put it in a food processor or a blender you can use an immersion blender what I have here is one roasted charred uh, sweet bell pepper that I've peeled and seeded uh, it's very easy you just put it under your broiler get it black on all sides and the easiest way to peel it is to put it into a paper bag and let it cool like close the paper bag tightly and let it cool and the steam will help you uh, get the peel off very easily so I'm going to put that pepper in here and some people don't add the pepper but I'm going to sorry uh, and then I have two cloves of garlic that I crushed and then uh, mixed with some coarse salt so I got a paste and uh, I have about a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper if you want it spicier you can add more and then I have one egg yolk and don't worry about about it being raw because you're going to add this uh, later to your hot broth so it'll partially cook it so don't worry about that and I'm going to add one tablespoon of fresh squeezed lemon juice and then I'm going to give this a whir and then I'm slowly slowly going to drizzle in some olive oil I'm going to start with a cup uh, I'm not going to put it all in at once obviously I want it to emulsify and you're looking for uh, a mayonnaise like consistency okay guys so I just want to show you the consistency it's a little bit more runny than you know the mayonnaise that you're used to getting from the store but this is fine for me and I'm just gonna let this set until we're ready to use it let the flavors meld a little bit and I added a little bit more garlic that's just to my taste I love garlic you can taste it and see if you want to add more to yours as well another thing you can do while your soup is cooking is cut up some uh, bread either French bread or Italian bread into about half inch slices and you're going to bake it at 325 degrees until they get nice and crispy these are called croutes and uh, they're just going to be dry and crispy you don't want to burn them though after cooking your soup for 45 minutes you want to strain it through a fine mesh strainer if you have a chinois it's great to use it now I'm just going to use a fine mesh strainer and use a wooden spoon and I just keep pushing through and, and you're going to be left with this mess uh, and you're going to throw this away uh, you don't have to do this uh, if I wasn't going to uh, strain it at all I'd probably put the uh, orange rinds in a cheesecloth so that I could fish them out later okay so I strained the stock into a large pot and then I washed out the original pot and then I strained it once again back into the original pot and I just I poured a little bit into this bowl I want you guys to see the beautiful saffron color of the stock now and you can make this up until this point way ahead of time you can refrigerate it and then bring it up to a boil again when you're ready to finish the soup at this point your stock should be perfectly seasoned so taste it if it needs a little bit of salt you can add it uh, it's not going to get much tastier than this so uh, you want to make sure that this is perfect at this point so I have some clams and some mussels soaking in some salty water and uh, as you can see here I have some uh, there's a mussel with a little bit oh, I floated away uh, you want to remove these beards on them uh, you just use a knife and you just pull it off and uh, any mussels that are open and don't close when you either tap on them or kind of give them a squeeze you don't want to use those throw those away any clams with a broken shell like this one you want to throw that away as well so I'm going to soak these for about half an hour before I cook them let them um, get rid of some of their sand inside give them a rinse scrub and we're going to use those in our bouillabaisse so I want to show you some of the fish and seafood that I'm going to be using you don't have to use all of these 
Uh, it can get quite expensive. It doesn't have to. You could do it with just cod if you wanted to. Um, so what I have here is a porgy right here with the skin and bones. I've just cut it into pieces. Here I have some cod. I have a striped bass. Uh, I have some halibut. I have some shrimp, some monkfish, and some scallops. I also have some lobster that I, I cooked previously and I've completely removed the shells from them and they're in the refrigerator waiting to be cooked, uh, heated through at the end. Some other fish that you could use are conger eel, uh, red snapper, I use the heads in making the stock. You can use perch or butterfish. If you can find any type of scorpion fish, uh, you know, they say that what makes an authentic uh, bouillabaisse is the rascasse fish, which is only found in France. Uh, this recipe originates in Marseille, and they say that we can't get it here, and I haven't seen it. Uh, I think you can get something similar on the Pacific coast. Uh, good luck to you. Let me know if you can. Okay, so I have some cut up potatoes that I've cut into circles that are about half an inch thick. And I'm going to add them to my hot strained broth. After cooking your potatoes, again at a rapid boil for 10 minutes, you can add your clams and you can add your fish. About five minutes before you're finished cooking, you want to add your mussels. your pre-cooked lobster. I only cooked it for about three minutes, so it's not completely cooked yet. You want to cook it until it's heated through. And you want to add your shrimp and your scallops. And once they're done cooking, it'll be ready to serve. One way to serve it is to put your fish and potatoes in a platter separately and have your roux ready to spread on the croutes and put your broth in a terrine or you can individually plate them with everything in the plate already. To serve it, you want to put some brouille on the croûts that you made and uh, get a little bit of each fish and uh, pieces of seafood that you like, some potato, and uh, pour some broth over the top, and I uh, hope you enjoy.